we have a big announcement being made by multiple scientists, multiple astronomers that have collected all this data on the object that they are dubbing V774104. Now this was discovered and put out into the public realm yesterday evening on the 10th, but today they've come out and they've made this announcement pretty much worldwide stating that there is an object out here. They're not quite sure what it is. Now it immediately raises the speculation of Planet X existing out there. And Planet X, you know, could be viewed as multiple things. If they find another planet, is it another planet that fits the description, so to speak, of a Planet X? A planet that is going to make its journey back into the inner solar system toward the sun and, and wreak havoc. They found multiple smaller objects out there, Ceres, all these different objects out here in the Oort cloud. But what they've discovered at this point is that this object's distance sits at around 103 AU, astronomical units. Now that's 103 times the distance from the Sun to the Earth. That would be 1 AU. This is the most distant object ever recorded. Besting Eris, Setna, and 2012 VP-113. Now, we know about all the NASA deception and how they come out and they say this and that. This isn't coming from NASA. This is coming from the American Astronomical Society Division for Planetary Sciences. Uh, this, they had a big meeting in Maryland, and this is where the information came out, and they have stated they, they do not have enough data to track its exact path. But they're saying it's roughly the size of a, of a medium-sized moon. And there's a couple different things they're looking for here. These unusual orbit points, where they're picking it up at, is pointing to a tug of a distant planetary mass object. This is the important stuff. You see, if it was to come inside a certain distance, they would say that Saturn is pulling it or having some kind of um, effect on this rock. But if it's out in the Oort cloud, past the distance where Saturn can have effect an effect on it, and they see that this thing is making its way in toward the sun even the slightest bit, and they can track it, it may show that this object has been around and is actually being influenced by our sun rather than these other large planets, either that or there is another large object sitting right on the outskirts of the Oort cloud, which is what many people have suspected all this time. Saturn, jupiter size planet or a dwarf star, dark star, that is sitting out here and affecting all the other objects. Now, if you look through history, this is where the stories of Planet X and, and Nibiru all come into play, is because it has been depicted of this other heavenly body that comes into the system, this horned disk, so to speak. And with it, it brings its own planets. Now, to some, this may seem kind of shocking, but what you need to know is that a lot, a majority of the star systems found in space are binary. Meaning that almost every star constellation and system out there has another star companion with it. Not all, but a lot. That star companion doesn't have to be a blazing sun like ours. It could be, in more times than not, it is a burnout dwarf star. A red dwarf, so to speak, that would be hard to detect coming in. What they would detect and could see would be the movement of these other bodies around that planet or around that sun, whatever it is, coming in. Those 
would definitely affect everything in the outer solar system. The problem is we have no idea the orbit, the path, anything of this thing. And as far as NASA goes, European Space Agency, they're all going to keep us in the dark. It's these independent astronomers across the globe that are coming together for these meetings that are bringing together all their data and are just basically bypassing NASA and all them. Not, this isn't a NASA event. This isn't a European Space Agency event. This is a collective of astronomers around the globe that have been studying different objects from different vantage points on the globe. A lot of this information coming from an, an, an observatory in Hawaii. So, what's it point to at this point? To me, just more hints that there is something else out there. And to me, all you have to do is take a good look right here. Every single light in the sky has life around it. It's just that simple to me. Once you can understand that and accept that, and you look at all the information that we've come across here recently that I've shown, all the objects around the sun, you can even see them from here on Earth. It's game-changing. There's a lot more going down here than what they want us to know, obviously. And I think as people begin to waken up, more and more they're going to start to realize, wow, space is just teeming with life, and we are stuck here on this rock, locked down. And they don't want to let us off of it. I wonder why when you've got guys down here that murder their own people left and right all across the globe. Do you think any other intelligent life would want us off this rock? When we can't even get along with one another over skin color? Are you kidding me? Religion? Things of that nature? You can't be peaceful? Of course they wouldn't. Would you? If you knew there was a hostile planet there and everyone was like, look, if these guys make it out in space, we're all smoked. They've got nukes. They're crazy. They kill each other off constantly on a daily basis. Why do we want them out here? See, that's how I see it. And I think that's ticked off, ticked off the upper echelon of the elite here on this planet that thought that they were going to be able to do this or that and go here and there with all this technology. And they come to find out they're going to have to find different routes like portals wormholes, things of that nature, to be able to get from point A to point B, not just take off out into space and, and keep on cooking. You're not going to get past them radiation belts first off. And until things change here on this planet, I don't believe mankind's going to see a warm welcoming out into space until we have showed the maturity and the responsibility here on the planet that not only can we respect ourselves and our own planet, but we've got to show that before we step out into the final frontier, so to speak. Just put yourself in the shoes of a higher intelligence. Would you want some maniacs going crazy coming out here? And what you have to realize here is the intelligence is seeing that there's good here. There's good to be had here. Star Wars, very real, happening right now. On the edges of space. We've covered it. We've showed it. Question is, is who are they shooting at? Why do they not why do they not want them here? And could they really be any worse than what we have here? These angels, these entities that have fallen from the heavens that are here, that they're worshiping, that have given them this technology, that are here. They're not coming from deep space. They're not deep space aliens. These entities, it is written, are here. They landed here. They were casted here. They're living inside this planet, underneath your oceans. And just because none of, none of you have ever seen them with your own eyes in your life, you believe they don't exist. You believe everything that comes out of that box in your living room. Brainwashing you. Till you unplug away from that, that box and that mainstream communication, you're never going to find the truth. Reality is, step outside, look up at the stars at night, you're looking at life all over. All over the place. You'd be a fool to think not. And how naive of anyone to think that you're the only life out here. It's ridiculous. When this planet itself is teeming with life. It is the biggest lie they've ever fed mankind. And we're going to continue to find those answers to the mystery of our history. I'll leave a link. It's been Dabu7.